Hi everyone, I'm George and this is a very special video because this aquascape here is exactly one year old at the time of filming. There is an entire playlist dedicated to this from the creation through maintaining it and also some cinematic footage. So I'll leave a link up there and also in the description if you want to check out the playlist. And this video is going to focus mainly on maintaining the scape, what I do and why I do it. And also at the end there'll be some lovely cinematic footage for you to enjoy. If this is your first time on my channel and you're interested in aquascaping then do consider subscribing, hit that notification bell and you'll get notified every time I upload a new video. Okay first thing I want to do is clean the aquarium glass so drain about 20 litres of water out using a good old siphon hose and a bucket. You can also use the opportunity to siphon off any loose soil, snails etc. It doesn't matter if you accidentally siphon away any of the sand because you can just replace that. It's really cheap and actually a lot of people will deliberately siphon off the top layer of the sand and replace it with fresh just to give it a really nice clean look. Be careful not to siphon off any shrimp and if you accidentally do you can just net them out of the bucket afterwards. Okay so now it's a case of cleaning the hard water marks you can see here. I've got the Denelé Cleanator which I'm a big fan of. These get rid of these hard water marks really easily and also any stubborn algae comes off without any problems at all. The reason I removed a good portion of water beforehand is so I don't accidentally spill a load of water over the edge. The reason I clean the glass first is we can see what we're doing better uh, when we do further maintenance if the glass is clean. Now top tip for when you're cleaning the glass you can see all that rubbish coming out there that's no problem we're going to do a huge water change later so any of these waste organics that are going to be floating around the tank now will be removed as part of a huge water change. Now I often get a lot of comments about why I do such large water changes because it is it does go against common kind of convention in fish keeping. Now the reason is it just dilutes these waste organics which can otherwise lead to algae and it also resets the nutrient levels because I like to dose liquid fertilizers every day and these nutrient levels can build up over the weeks or so and by doing this huge water change it just resets these nutrient levels prevents them from building too much. So here you can see the green algae. We call this green dust algae. Uh, very easy to remove. It tends to come back after a couple of weeks of no water changes. So for me it's just an indication that I need to do a bit of a maintenance session. I do probably maintain this aquascape on average once a month which is a longer interval than I would normally do on a, on a planted aquarium like this. But I find it's absolutely fine. The fish are healthy, the plants are healthy. I haven't got any real nuisance algae, just some algae on the glass and a little bit on the hardscape which is you know completely natural. And then once a month or so do a big maintenance session like this and then it's fine again for another month. So by looking down the cross section of the glass like this you can see if you've missed any algae quite easily. These are really good tools, these Denelay Cleanators. They're not particularly cheap and they do actually wear out after time so they will need replacing but in my experience they're one of the best algae cleaning tools available. Top tip for cleaning between the gravel and the glass is to use a credit card or similar object and then just gently slide it in between like so. Careful not to trap any of the gravel between the glass and the card because otherwise it can scratch. So do be quite careful but just a really easy way of cleaning the glass right down there where it's quite hard to reach with a toothbrush. Okay so now what I like to do is just thin the plants out. They are the crypts in particular coming quite choked, they're super dense so it's important that we thin these out otherwise they can restrict circulation, restrict flow, you get dead spots and this can lead to poor plant growth and, and algae issues. Actually there's quite a few crypts with holes in and some of the lilies have got holes in as well, I don't know if you can see these. Now I'm not sure what's causing them, um, could be snails, could be fish. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think. I, I don't think it's snails, they tend to eat on decomposing matter and the plants are healthy so I think it's one of the fish. So it's either the uh, the pearl gouramis or the dwarf chain loaches. I don't think it could be the rasboras uh, but interested to know what your thoughts are. Maybe even the shrimp but I doubt it because they do everything gets fed quite well so it is a bit of a a bit of a mystery why I'm getting so many holes in the plant. So what I'll do now is just look in from the above the aquarium. This is one of the great things about having a rimless tank, so easy to maintain. 
and just inspect all the plants and just remove any of the unhealthiest ones. They've got holes in and actually this is working to our advantage because we need to thin out so we might as well just thin out using the, the unhealthiest plants. So I've got a couple of Eusteriana leaves here which are absolutely massive. What I like to do is just slide my hand down right to the bottom of the plant, give it a pinch at the bottom with your thumbnail and then forefinger and then you can just quite easily remove the plant. So you're going to thin out a couple of the biggest leaves because these are really going to be restricting circulation and also lights from hitting the other plants. Trimming plants is great. It stimulates new plant growth, encourages better circulation, light penetration. Don't be shy at maintaining your tanks. You know, if, if you've got an unhealthy plant, then just get rid of it. And if you've got healthy growth conditions, it'll just grow back no problem at all. So I actually find the maintenance process really therapeutic. If I had more time at home I would maintain this tank more often rather than just once a month. Um, I'm actually having a really not lovely few days at home over the Christmas break. At the time of filming it is December the 27th, so a couple of days after Christmas. Had a few days off, off work completely without any filming or anything and then really looking forward to getting all my home tanks back on track and um, hopefully be able to update you with some really new content soon. I want to take the opportunity to thank you guys for watching my content. You know, I get such lovely feedback, such lovely comments about how I've inspired many of you to get into aquascaping. You know, taking a break from aquascaping and I've inspired you to get back into it. You know, made it hopefully a bit more kind of simple to understand, uh, hopefully an inspiration as well. So, you know, things like visiting Green Aqua uh, and showing you know what can be achieved but also budget friendly aquascapes as well and, and everything in between and hopefully shows to you guys that aquascaping doesn't know any barriers it's it's all about kind of enriching your lives with something beautiful that you can live with in your home or your office or, or whatever living space you're in you know I honestly believe that having an aquascape in that space enriches the space, enriches the people that are in the space and it's just a, a beautiful hobby and I'm really privileged to be able to you know make a, a career out of it and, and part of that career is massively involved with creating new content for you guys. It's really important for me to let you guys know that I am very grateful for this opportunity and grateful that you are watching my content and enjoying it and, and liking it and little things like hitting the like button, commenting, sharing, these are all really fundamentally helpful in in helping aquascaping. Hugely therapeutic for me on a personal level. You know, I've got a couple of projects lined up in the new year which are going to further kind of enhance this uh, therapeutic value that aquascaping can bring. Here you get an idea of how many crypts I've removed, how many individual leaves, lily leaves, and the scope actually hasn't changed that much. So it just shows how you can thin out loads without actually making too much impact on the aquascape. Okay, next step is to just siphon off a load of the detritus again from the substrate, the cosmetic sand substrate, by disturbing all of the plants, etc. A load of it has fallen to the front, so we can get rid of that. It's all about limiting the accumulation of waste organics. This is really important in a planted tank system if you want to keep it clean and keep it uh, less risk of algae. Now, you might have noticed some of you more observant people that the flow on this filter is massively restricted. It's a JBL 1501, which is actually quite a powerful filter. And you can see it's not coming out very much there at all. So to me, that indicates one, the filter needs cleaning and two, absolutely, definitely the pipes need cleaning. Now, the pipes uh, are old. They are the original pipes that I installed on the tank and they've actually become stained. So I'm gonna replace these with brand new clear hose. I'm gonna clean the pipe glass pipe work and I'll show you how I do that as well. I've removed actually quite a lot of the foreground cosmetic gravel, so I'm just going to replace it with some new. It's from Unipack. There's quite a few different brands, this style of kind of just off-white, naturalistic looking gravel. I really like it. It doesn't influence the water chemistry, so I think it's like a quartz product. So just grab handfuls of it. And then just gently scatter it around the front. Simple as that because it's a really fresh new look. And you only have to do this every probably every six months or so, I would suggest. You know, a bag of this gravel is probably only gonna cost you a few bucks, a few pounds. And I think, you know, for the extra aesthetic impact it gives you, I think that's money well spent. Now it's time for our huge water change. Now the reason for the massive water change is to dilute all of these waste organics that are floating around the tank. If we don't dilute those with a big water change, this is just gonna trigger algae. So I'm going to drain it down to probably an inch or two off the gravel so the fish are going to be absolutely fine and then we'll fill it up with fresh dechlorinated tap water 
that's been brought to temperature. And just as a point of note, I always use tap water, very rarely use reverse osmosis. My tap water at home is very hard. It contains all sorts of stuff, nitrates, phosphates, uh, other nutrients, which is absolutely fine for, for a planted tank. So we're at the point now where we've drained so much water out that the plants are exposed to the air. It's really important that the plants don't dry out too much, so give them a spray with a regular kind of garden mister. And then we'll probably need to do that every few minutes or so. Okay, we're filling up with water now using this special red colander, which I'm sure you all know and love just as much as me by now. Uh, I've been using this for, must be nearly 15 years or so. Almost every aquascope I've ever created has been filled using this. So I fill with water straight from the mains and I add a load of dechlorinator right at the beginning of the process, straight into the tank. I like to use Seachem Prime. Um, the, I use a mixer tap in my utility room, just next to the kitchen, a bucket of water, a submersible pump, and then a regular kind of garden hose. And it just pumps the water straight into the tank as the water's filling uh, from the tap, filling up the water in the bucket and getting pumped out at the same time. Hopefully that makes sense to you. So it fills up super slowly, which is what we want. We don't want to be filling it too fast because it'll create a load of cloudy water. And while that's filling, I'm going to remove the really dirty glassware. I'm going to change these hoses because they're absolutely filthy. They're actually stained now. Now it's time to clean our glassware. So I've put the filter outlet here and the filter inlet with the skimming portion and the adjusting portion here in a sink with hot water and bleach solution. So it's about 10, 10% bleach, hot water. I'm wearing rubber gloves, as you can see, so the bleach doesn't harm my skin. And then just let it soak for about 10 minutes or so, so it loosens off the dirt. And then get a hose brush, and then we simply clean it up. And the bleach just really loosens off that dirt, cleans it up really nice and easy super important that we pay attention not to smash the glass against the this is a this is like an enamel sink so it's really hard um if i drop this against the enamel sink then it will probably smash I've, I've done it before in fact i did a video all about it so just be really mindful that the glass is very fragile and it's a relatively expensive mistake and potentially dangerous as well you know sharp glass so i'm just using a toothbrush here as well Obviously not one I've been using to clean my teeth. This is a dedicated aquarium toothbrush. And you can see how quickly that's cleaned up. So the glassware is beautiful, but it's only beautiful if you keep it clean. Now I do, like I said, I, I do this once a month. I should do it once, ideally. You want to be doing it once a week, once every two weeks, if you want to keep it spotlessly clean. Now to clean the floating skimming portion here. This is the bit that sucks the water in from the surface. Finally, it's a case of just rinsing off our glassware with running, I'm using hot water here, just to rinse off any bits of bleach, etc. And then I'll put this in a bucket with fresh water and dechlorinator to further ensure we don't get any bleach contamination in the aquarium. So we now have clean pipe work there, the glass pipe work, brand new clear hoses. I've changed the JBL filter to the Oase Biomaster 600 Thermo We've got the quick release pre-filter here, which is great. And there's a heater built in behind it. And the actual flow rate is really good. Here we've got an inline diffuser and then we've got a GLA, really nice CO2 regulator with a five kilogram fire extinguisher, bubble counter there, solenoid there. And a really nice, reliable, easy to maintain system. Just really, really happy with this setup. There we have it guys, the Aquascaper 1200, now one year old exactly fully maintained and I think looking its best. It's actually probably my favorite personal aquascape that I've ever done at home. I love it for so many reasons. It's easy to maintain. Like I said, I only do it once a month. The impact is great. The plant health is amazing. There's no nuisance algae. I love the equipment. It is high end, uh, but you can achieve some of the results with a lot less expense. You know, they're all easy plants. You don't have to have co 2 injection for most of these plants. They most of them are epiphytes as well, which means they attach to the decor. Um, so you can create really nice instant impact with your aquascaping. I just love it. And, and the fact that it's been running for a year, 
it means a lot to me you know it's been a been a really great year for me and to have this constant throughout the year has been really lovely i've done so much traveling i've been to germany denmark belgium switzerland usa obviously uk i come home and this is the one constant which i absolutely love i love maintaining it i love showing it off to you guys and i hope it gives you some enjoyment like it's given me i think i'm going to keep it going for another year let me know what you think you take care keep on escaping here we go. Thank you.